Hey everybody, it's your boy Serge Dragon with a midnight edition with my boys. We're going to do a podcast review on Monday Night Raw on the 19th of October 2020, followed by NXT on 21st. 21st. There you go. So with me today is Andre Mitchell. Yo. Chris Petrie. And Mike Henry. Ready for a midnight edition of the Heaven's Monsters podcast? Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! I said, if you're ready for a midnight version of the Heaven's Monsters podcast, give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! This part began with Retribution confronting the Fiend and the Dragon. Hold up, let me get that information. Yep, we start the night with the Fiend and Alexa Bliss of all things coming to the arena, and ultimately we would have Retribution coming in trying to jump him, but. Just as when the lights turn off on Retribution, the Fiend and Alexa Bliss are gone with the Hurt Business coming out to fight him. In which case, the first match of the night, Mikey? The Hurt Business versus Retribution in an epic eight-man tag. Who was the winner of that match? The Hurt Business. Yep. Due to the fact of... Bobby Lashley getting the, what do you call it? Say it again. The uh, full Nelson or full Lashley full on, Nelson. on T-Bar. T-Bar had no choice but to tap out, giving Retribution its first loss as a team in WWE. After which... The match was over. Immediately, the lights go off again, and The Fiend is there taking out all the members. I mean, all the members. All four male members of the Retribution. So, what are your thoughts on that, Mikey? Oh, my God. I mean, I couldn't believe that Alessa is still hanging out with that crazy bastard, The Fiend. Mm -hmm. I said it. I'll say it again. He is using her to get what he wants. And then... After they disappeared, out comes the Hurt Business because they got some unfinished business with Retribution. And after Retribution got, the, after Retribution got there, out comes the Fiend and all hell of those. How do you, Andre, how do you feel about the fact that the Retribution lost to the Hurt Business and the Fiend actually jumped all members of the Retribution? I'm glad they logged into the hurt business. They need to get their butts kicked. You, Chris? Let's, uh, let's, uh, the team that's standing there holding hands, but they disappeared by the, by retribution. And you hear Mustafa Ali say, get him, get him, how are you going to get him? It's dark, it's dark in the arena. Yeah, where'd they go? Well, there's two things. One, Mustafa Ali and Brett Reese vowed to shut down WWE. That's number one. And number two, guess who confronted the Hurt Business? Titus O'Neil. Who? Titus O'Neil? Titus O'Neil. Who? What? World Fly Take it, man. Yeah. You got, got jumped. Yeah, he was actually looking to join the Hurt Business, and they wanted nothing of him. So they beat him down, four to one, on the ground. Kicking him. That's X-Men's favorite, MVP. Yeah, that would have been a good addition, because courtesy of his size, but they didn't want none. That sucks. Also, in addition to that, we got to mention Retribution of Mustafa Ali, mentioning, and this is something I was uh, questioning who was, we got our answer. Mustafa Ali was on SmackDown, Issuing the fact of he was the one, the hacker, who was actually, thankfully, our hero to reveal that Dolph Ziggler, as well as, uh, no, Sony DeVille were the ones sabotaging, uh, Otis. That was a while back. So he was the hacker? Yeah, basically, that was supposed to be a gimmick uh, relatively similar to Sammy Callahan. But I guess it was too similar that they didn't want to use it. But he said it with a just of a push of a button. He couldn't change things 
for the better or worse. And he wanted the WWE to suffer for saying that they didn't get to use him. And he uh, brought a, a bunch of people who felt the same way. Damn. All right, what's the next thing, Mikey? Oh, oh, oh one more thing for Mason's point. Unless we're showing the Firefly Funhouse, just for curiosity. Yeah, we'll mention that in just a bit. The next one, Chris Peepy's favorite, AJ Styles versus the original bro, Matt Riddle. All right, so with Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles, this is pretty much a rematch on SmackDown. They never really got a good fight going back then, except for that one match, which was the Intercontinental title match. So this was interesting to see Matt Riddle try to showcase himself again against AJ Styles, who says the face that runs the place and the bro that's going to run the show. So both with those monikers, once again, clash, and ultimately it was AJ Styles who got the win. Your thoughts on that, Chris? AJ Styles by a big bodyguard. The ringside with a, a big... Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I forgot about him. It's the guy who was the bouncer for Shane McMahon on the outside of Raw Underground. Who is that guy? I think uh, Jordan. Uh, that was his name, Jordan. Yeah, he was intimidating bro, uh, Matt Riddle. All he did was clench his fist and he got him running. Like, damn, man. H.A. Styles got some muscle. And size. Yeah. yeah. Don't know what's his name, but he is from the Raw Underground. Because I don't know why they canceled Raw Underground. That sucks. Hey, Andre. Yo. How you feel about AJ Styles beating Matt Riddle with a big, big bodyguard? Ah, that loser AJ Styles, man. Come on, what you need a bodyguard for? That loser. You hear that, Chris? He's afraid he'll get his butt kicked. Uh, Andre. Come on, Andre. No loser. Uh, what? What? He don't need a bodyguard, man. Come on. <laughs> Maybe he, maybe he's using a bodyguard to get back on the top. Maybe. Maybe, I guess. Next thing is the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka, defending her title against the number one contender, Lana. Quick work, Lana taps out to Asuka Lock, but only after that does both Nia Jax and Saint, uh, Sonya Deville. Nah. Um, Why, I had her mouth in my name. Shayna Baszler, excuse me, both begin with S. So, mm. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, the women's tag team champion, come in and poor Lana, poor Lana, for the fifth time gets Samoan dropped into the announcer's table. Damn. And ultimately, after that, um, it would be a six, a four way match with the exclusion of. The Riot Squad, being from SmackDown, get an opportunity at a Fatal 4-Way title shot for the Women's Championship. In which case, like I said, we're doing a speed run. We got the women, both women's, defends their titles, both Asuka and Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. So, damn, what do y'all think about that? The women with the championship's belts reign supreme. What about you, Andre? All right, I guess. You, Chris? Well, we knew Lana was not going to win. She was going to tap. Hey, she tried. You, Mikey? For the fifth week in a row, Lana gets put through it. For the fifth week in a row, Lana gets put through a table yet again because I'm not going to waste my breath over and over and over and over. AEW just trying to stick it to WWE. Even though that Lana's real life husband Rusev, aka Miro, is an AEW, because I'm like, why is AEW trying to stick in the WWE, allowing Lana to get put through a tape? Let's just, let's just come on now. Also, Actually, I want to correct you on the fifth week in a row. Remember, 
one week was skipped due to the COVID. That's why they didn't defend their championships or show up on Monday Night Raw on Class of Champions. So she didn't get slammed to the ta- uh, down to the table that week. But two weeks later, again and again. I got it. I got it. Poor Lana. <laughs> Sorry, look. Go back. Go back. Start over again because your meal got froze. It did? Oh, so it's not just my end. It's yeah, not just your end anymore. Okay. So what Let's part start. did you hear? Start again. What part did you not hear? You heard about... It was, it was about Lana not getting slammed to the table at Clash of Champions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was covering. I was just laughing after that. All right. What's the next thing? Oh, it was the uh, the concert of Elias showcasing his album before tomorrow. His album, his new album, comes out tomorrow, and uh, he plays some good music. And then Jeff Hardy comes out as a mystery person playing the guitar, and man, did he rev it up! And then he hits Elias with the it chases him with the guitar. <laughs> Alright, let's skip that one. That was funny though. That was funny. Uh Kofi Kingston gets a one on one opportunity against Seamus for what he did to Big E previously, and Kofi Kingston gets the win. Also, we gotta mention the fact that the Hall of Famers were in the arena, including uh what do you call it? Big E, as well as Mark Henry were watching that match. Uh, they were enjoying it. Oh boy. <laughs> also, Jeff Jarrett was in there, if I'm not mistaken. Or was that SmackDown? Yeah. Who cares? And Ric Flair again. Ric Flair was watching. <laughs> so, that was a good match. Uh, next up is... Oh, I know you want to comment this one. Earlier in the night, we would have Tucker challenge Miz and Morrison for a tag team match, and he would say he'd find himself a partner. He finds himself a partner in this mysterious mask person. Really? It's El yeah. Grand Gordo. Really, it's just Otis in a mask. Which reminds me of the Luchadors. Yeah. <laughs> the match ultimately ended with our truth running through the ring, acting like, uh, you don't see me, you don't see me. And uh, he's getting chased by... Akira Tozawa, Drew Gulak, and even the Lucha House Party members, Lindsay Dorado, and Grand Metalik, who paid notice that Otis was in the ring wearing a freaking Lucha mask, saying, who's that? And giving uh, El Gran Gordo the win, and even Mandy Rose is back there giving him a ham alongside New Day. Woo-hoo. What is your thoughts, Mikey? Hilarious. I mean, hilarious. You, Chris? Wait, wait, go ahead, Mikey. El El Guangardo, world's premier luchador. That reminds me of somebody. Remember Becky Lynch was the luchador? Remember that? And then, then he came. First was her, then he came. Mickey James, then he was a nap. Oh, this. You forget the Miz actually poses a mask individual to get his job back way back then when he fought... Uh, Eugene. Mm-hmm. Man, man, I don't know what these people dress up as Lucha Doors. Nah, I'm finding funny that for, uh, The Miz was actually trash talking, saying, "Who the hell comes in here dressing as a uh, Lucha Door?" <laughs> like, uh, Hilarious. you? Hilarious. Hilarious. What the hell, Miz? Dumbass. Insert foot. How about you, Chris? <laughs> And uh, all those people with Jay's with me for the 247 championship. And uh, and uh, Tucker and that mass Luxador hmm, uh, pick up the win. How about you, Andre? How do you feel that? Uh Otis got the win over Miz and Morrison by wearing a mask and posing as a luchador. 
That was pretty funny, but I'm glad he got to beat those two losers. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have Braun Strowman versus Keith Lee, round two. Ooh. Talk about heavy. Quickly in this match, I got to point out that these guys definitely show power beyond belief. But ultimately, you end it with an accidental or purposely groin attack from the back of the head of Braun Strowman getting up. Ultimately getting him a chance to boot the hell out of Keith Lee and get the pin. Keith Lee then kicked him in the groin in return. And so uh, I got to say this. Keith Lee said, Monster Among Men, meet the dragon. I was like, what? I know you a fan of Dragon Ball Z, Keith Lee, but ooh, he called himself a dragon now? You hear that, Andre? Did you hear the when Keith Lee got low blowed by uh, Braun Strowman, he low blowed him back and told him, Monster Among Men, meet the dragon. Come on, man. Forget Braun Strowman. I want to see Keith Lee just beat the crap out of him. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Although Braun Strowman got the win. Ah, it's messed up, bro. Ah, uh, he ain't done with him. He ain't done with him. I want to see more, bro. What about you, Mikey? It was a back and forth match, but Braun Strowman with the big boot, and then Keith Lee says that he's not done with Strowman. Checking these uh, stuff. Yeah, we talked about Hurt Business. We talked about Mustafa Ali. On the edition of Firefly Funhouse, we would see the rabbit talk about his family and then get mauled by the buzzard. And Alexa Bliss showcased herself in the Firefly Funhouse before ending that little uh, promo. Prior to what Mikey was saying. Okay. All right. Uh, Alyssa Bix. Life is getting, it's getting sucked by the, sucked down by the thing. Yep. Lastly, we have a message from Randy Orton from hell. He has the Hell in a Cell drop down. He walks in, locks himself in the Hell in a Cell, reminiscing about the past. Drew McIntyre shows up, and he planned ahead. He's like, I dare you to try and get here. You can't do it. He got some bolt cutters. Randy's already going into the arena holding that chair, and it ends on that note with them comfort, uh, comfort, uh, looking at each other. I was like, well, that's how it ends? They're not going to fight each other again? Oh, you going to leave us with that? I can't. I, I couldn't believe they cut up the air. I just couldn't believe it. Hmm. You, Chris? Yeah, I can't believe they, they cut off the air. We can't see the fight against Orton and McIntyre. How you How you feel about that, Andre? All right, so far. Yeah, with the uh, the show ending. With Drew McIntyre confronting uh, Randy Orton and Hell in a Cell. Literally, the cell. And they end the show on that. They don't even see them fighting each other. They're just trash talking each other. I'm like, what the? What? How do you end it like that? Yo, I just wanted to see them beat the crap out of each other. Forget the trash talk, you know? Yeah, I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch that later. <laughs> did y'all see, did y'all see the, the pay-per-view tonight? Not yet. I'm going to watch it uh, later. Okay. Oh, okay. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stay off TikTok because I know there's gonna be spoilers on that. Same with Instagram. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm not getting on there. <laughs> yeah, I want to, but I'm not. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Raw talk. Who was the guest? Uh, can't remember. I did watch it, but I can't remember who it was. Uh, Nikki Cross. Yeah, she was talking about her opportunity to go up against Asuka and also uh, what was going to happen with Alexa Bliss. Does she still plan on following her? Yes, she is. Who was the other one? 
new day. Oh, the new day and the boy. Oh, you know our truth is happy to see them. You know our truth is happy to see them. They talking about Wait. Hold up. Was it the new day? Cause I thought we talked about this already with uh Kofi Kingston saying you never forget uh an elephant never forgets to ride a bicycle. Yeah, we talked about that. That was a, a smack talk. No, that was uh, uh no. Was it? Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I remember. I remember now. Damn, they were on uh talking smack and now they're on raw talk. No? That was on Raw Talk. What the hell? Hmm. Who was the other guest? Uh, we had Nikki Cross. We had New Day. Hold up. I'm going to look that up. I'm actually quite curious. Raw Talk. Hmm. It was the mi- It was Jeff Hardy. And the Miz and Morrison, that's who it was. It wasn't New Day? Oh, wait. Okay, I was about to say, wait, what? What? We have Nikki Nikki Cross, Jeff Hardy, Miz, and Morrison. Okay, so Jeff Hardy was next on the list. See, you got me tripping. You got me tripping, Chris. I'm like, I know we did that on one already. Well, I did did say Nikki Cross. Yeah, you did. I'm not going to say you didn't. Okay. So, with Jeff Hardy, he was looking for the fact that he's going to try and deal with Elias. He hates the fact that Elias blames him, but he's he's going to deal with him accordingly, knowing that he lacked his music, wanted to showcase it, and then just beat the living hell out of him. <laughs> yeah. So, one thing uh, <laughs> he was talking about, and I was playing this while watching, uh, while sitting with T-Money, and he said, I was telling him, ooh, it would be a... Damn good if we saw band versus band. It would be Elias' band versus Jeff Hardy in music. Battle of the Bands. That's what it's called. We haven't seen the Battle of the Bands in WWE in so long. Ooh. How would you feel, Andre, if uh, Elias and Jeff Hardy had Battle of the Bands? I would like to see that. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I'm just saying, I want to see that party and Elias band versus band. And you, Chris? I mean, uh, Mikey? <laughs> well, it's been a long time. Let's see what Elias can do next. Now he's back on Raw. Finally, with Miz and Morrison, they were talking about, again... About Mandy Rose, about Tucker, oh. about the, the court meeting, about the money in the bank, how Otis is not worthy, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Even our truth was confused, like, wait, 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 what, what, huh, huh? <laughs> so we're just going to skip that. We, we've already heard that oh so many times. And I saw SmackDown, so that's pissed me off. We'll have to cover that. If I get home early enough, I might try and do a podcast on Tuesday. Can't guarantee. Can't promise that, though. But we'll try. Maybe we can do a midnight edition on that. Sound good, guys? Because at least that one I get home around 11. We'll see. All right. I already got it here, uh, Mikey. Do you got it on your end? NXT? 21st? I got that one. All right, what's the first match of the night? Kicked off with Kushida versus Tommaso Ciampa versus Velveteen Dream in a triple threat match. Woo! Damn, that is a pay-per-view quality match. Oh, how are they doing this? Oh, how are they doing this? Oh, oh, that was, oh, that was top of the line. Ten out of ten. Oh, and Velveteen Dream was going Cowboy Bob Orton on him with a cast on his hand. Damn, it hit uh, Tommaso Ciampa on the head, giving Kushida the opportunity to pin him. The winner of the match is Kushida, and Tomo- uh, Velveteen Dream is laughing, knowing that Tommaso Ciampa lo- was the one that was pinned. Damn. 
What do you think about that, Andre? Uh, I don't know, man. It was all right, I guess. You want to see him go it again? Yep. I know. How about you, Chris? Yeah. The, the reason the other thing got cast because of Kushida breaking his wits. And now uh, Kushida has been a former uh, NXT uh, champion, Tommaso Ciampa. What about you, Mikey? That was crazy. A crazy triple threat showdown. All right, what's the next match, Mikey? Amber Moore versus Jesse Kamea. Well, Jesse Kamea was still one of those rookies getting her butt handed to her by Alexa Bliss. I mean, yeah, Amber Moon. Why did I, why did I say? We have Alexa Bliss in my mind. I have a, a Alexa Bliss there. It's the, it's the red hair, my brothers. It's the red hair. I saw Alexa Bliss on the image here. Why did I see a Alim- Why do I see Alexa Bliss? Why? I do not know. I do not know. But it was Ember Moon. That's one of my favorite uh, women wrestlers right now. I know Texas native. Uh huh. And a uh, damn good girl at using uh, her own style of the corkscrew off the top rope stunner, which she calls the Eclipse. Love the stunners. Always have. And she gets the win, but then gets kicked upside the head by the queen of kicks. Uh, Dakota Kai. Thank you. Dakota Kai. And says that she is not going to be a f- forgotten and said that she is going to beat her ass because she's not going to run past her for the NXT Women's Championship. So she's got somebody already in a storyline. That's the uh, Dakota Kai. Your thoughts on that, Mikey? Mikey? It's uh, our rear end. It's our rear end again. That froze the video. But like I said, Emma Moon got the victory, but then gets jumped from out of nowhere by Dakota Kai. Oh boy. Let's not forget that both Dakota Kai and her bodyguard, Kelvin Gazar, got their butts kicked. Let's not forget that. Mm-hmm. And yep. we'll talk about that shortly about Raquel and Rhea Ripley. Having their match at Halloween Havoc, which we'll get to that shortly. You, Chris? Uh, because some momentum, but being attacked by Dakota Kai, I, I cannot wait for that for you. How's the show so far, Andre? All right, so far. Next is Bonson Reed versus Austin Theory. Twice. Oh, Says it right there. Twice. So Austin, oh. Th- Austin Theory is up there saying that he is not going to lose again and again. So he ends up going in a match with Bonson Reed. And it's one hell of a match until Bonson Reed throws away, uh, uh, throws around Austin Theory and then lands on him with a big old splash and pins him one, two, three. It was immediately after that that Austin Theory grabs a microphone, tells him that he's not going to be done with him. That's not how it's going to end. He cannot constantly be losing. He tends to get back there here and fight him again. He does, and then he lays his ass out with a finisher and pins him again. Immediately after he's put in an uh, immediately after match uh, interview, and uh, he just walks away. Ultimately, at this vehicle, he's confronted again, and he says, I'm done. I quit. I was like, ooh, Austin Theory quit. My thoughts is, it's just a storyline. It's just a storyline, so don't be surprised if he comes back. Mm-hmm. That that you saw when, my, when Kevin Owens, was, when he says, I quit, and then walked away. But Austin Theory Man, he got jumped not once but twice to that big old Bronson weed. Hmm. All right, let me mention some stuff that is on the bottom. First, the Gargano's house. You know for a fa- you know for a fact that 
Johnny Gargano does not like the fact that a wheel is going to determine his match. He does not like that. When they were testing it, it was going to be a buried alive match. In Candice LeRae, it's a street fight, trick or treat street fight. And then after that, it's a casket match for Johnny Gargano. He's like fed up. He's going to bed. He, he says, this, this thing wants me dead. <laughs> and I already showed you images of what's on that wheel of fortune. The least dangerous thing would be blindfold match. The oh, most. What? A devil's playground match. Take your pick. Yeah. And then you got also the fact that the most dangerous match was either a TLC match or, uh, I guess, buried alive match. I would say casket match, but at least you're just put in the casket. Buried alive, you're buried alive. It's in it's in the hands of Shasi Blackheart, the host of Halloween Havoc. Let her decide. Oh no, no, that's also another thing. If it lands on Shotzi Blackheart's icon, it's literally Shotzi's choice. So she could make whatever match she wants. <laughs> she may insert herself in a triple threat with Candice and Evo. I doubt that. After that, we also have ourselves a... Cameron Grimes, cocky as hell, thinking it's going to be a regular match. It's not. It's going to be a, what was it? Haunted House Horrors match with Dexter Loomis. And he's right there. He's right there. He's staring at him. He doesn't even know. He walks off the other way. <laughs> Dex is gonna kill him. Dex is gonna kill him. <laughs> Terry Gry was scared. He was scared. How do you feel about that, Andre? Knowing Cameron Grimes is gonna be in a haunted house horrors match with Dexter Loomis. Looking at him, and he doesn't even know he's in, uh, behind the door. Just staring at him. <laughs> Say that again. It'll be interesting to see. Ooh, yeah. Also, we get a uh, promo with Io Shirai saying that whatever match comes up on that wheel, she'll beat Candice. She'll retain her championship at Halloween Havoc. She plans on it. What's the next match, Mikey? Oh, oh you forgot to mention Damian Priest. Yeah, Damian Priest had a promo while getting tattooed saying he could take pain, so whatever happens, whatever match comes up, he'll be ready. Johnny Gargano? He won't. And of course, I also mentioned the two American badasses Look ahead and how do we have a showdown? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, the next match, Legano del Fantasma versus Isaiah versus God, Big Pappas, and Ashante D. Adonis. In a six-man tag. So, in this uh, six-man tag team match, I said team, yeah. it would be it would be interesting to know on the ring apron, I think that's Isaiah Swift Scott, DDTing, um, Santos Escobar, and also the fact that Jake Atlas, or Jack, no, Jake is right, Jake Atlas gets him with his special move, a cartwheel DDT, off the announce table into the floor. But in the arena, Jacqueline Wilde manages to pin the Ashanti and gets the win for his team. And Santos Escobar is just dumbfounded knowing that he got DDT'd by Jack Atlas. If he doesn't fight Isaiah Swerve Scott, I think Jack Atlas might be in the running for a 
cruiserweight title shot. What do you think, Chris? Take out a list. Mike, if you're first championship match, or, or I'll say a swear Scott, or, I don't know. Mm. How about you, Mikey? Mm. Uh, Fantasma's team got beat. No, they won. Oh, they won. Excuse me. Huh? <laughs> Jake Lattis that- had no idea what's coming. Yeah, yeah, the way it sounded like it with the Santos Escobar getting his ass whooped outside the ring. But Jack and Wild won it for the team. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. You heard me, Andre? Santos Escobar gets his ass whooped outside the ring in his 16, uh, I mean, yeah, again with the 16, six man tag match, but his partner, uh, Jacqueline Wow gets the win for his team, but he's just like, oh, oh, why is everybody jumping me? That was crazy, man. His team won the battle, but he's the one who took the most damage. How messed up is that? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Next, we got Ever Rise versus Killian Dane and Drake Maverick. Drake Maverick, who is literally having to watch Killian Dane in the ring with a Boston leg crab, ultimately cuts loose and becomes the fury that he was claiming he was, taking a steel chair, ultimately getting himself and Killian Dane disqualified. The win goes to Ever Rise, but then Killian Dane is looking at him like, where was that rage before? Where's this guy been? And he's kind of happy to know that he's teaming up with Drake Maverick now, but he hates the music. He says, come on, let's go. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Mikey? Oh, my God. Who would have thought that Drake Maverick was going to come out and hit everybody with a steel chair? Uh, you, Chris? Uh, uh. I just hate the fact that Everard won by disqualification, but the Jack Magic using a steel chair and got him, got him and his partner disqualified. How about you, Andre? All right, so far. The next match we're just going to run through, it's Cadis Card. Can you see Cat? Casey Kazar, Ricky State's girlfriend. Thank you. Versus Zia Lee. Or Zia Lee. This match was called up upon by her and uh, Boa. And Casey accepted. In this match, Casey actually rolled up the pin and got it for a three count. Whatever Zia, Zia Lee's issue was, she dem- she said she needed to win this match. But she ended up losing and having herself a fit, taking out both her and her partner. Um, who was the other girl? Cadence Carter? Yeah, Caden Carter. Yeah, she laid them both out, but we're still wondering, what was Boa's deal with the paperwork? What did he show her, and why did she have to win so bad? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe, she, maybe she got her... Uh, a day, a day left. I don't know. Next, we're going to skip also as far as review, but we're just going to say this. Timothy Thatcher, as is one of his students, Anthony, uh, and Anthony, there you go. Anthony Green. How do you pronounce that? That's what you said, Anthony Green, in that Thatch as Thatch can demonstration. Whatever the hell you call it. Mm-hmm. And it turns into a match because he was actually showing aggressiveness to his teacher. So he put him in his place and he made him tap out. So, go on to the next match. We have a promo with Adam Cole at home and Danny Birch and Oni Lurkin are promised bleh, a match between the Bobby Fish and what was the other guy? 
Strong? Roger Strong. Roger Strong. Roger Strong. These two were supposed to fight Drizango, but it would end with both Bobby Fish at one point and Roger Strong at another, both getting jumped and leaving Kyle O'Reilly to fill in for Bobby Fish. And then with Roger Strong taken out, Bobby, Kyle O'Reilly didn't have no partner. So ultimately he said, make the decision. So AU's out. I mean, uh, UA's out. Undisputed era. UE. Sorry, I keep getting the letters wrong. UE's out. And only Lorcan and Danny Birch, since they lost to Undisputed Era, get the number one contender spot. So the match would can go on, and it would be only Lorcan and Danny Birch versus Brizango. This was a brilliant match, but a hooded figure got involved without the referee knowing. And at the last second, Danny Birch low blows Fandango and pins him. Without the referee knowing, and we're like, what the hell? A lot of us were putting two and two together that this mystery person attacked the Undisputed Era one by one, and Danny Burton and Ola Larkin were in, in cahoots with him this whole time. And then once he was revealed, oh my god. Mikey! Matt, Matt. Yeah, go ahead. Matt, Matt. Pat McAfee, the man who got his ass whipped by Adam Cole at TakeOver. Oh my I god. I hope Adam Cole was watching that. Because his arch nemesis is back. What the fuck? So, so, so you're telling me that Pat McAfee is the one that delivered the attack on the Undisputed Era? Is Pat McAfee trying to get back at the leader of the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole? Most likely. Oh get your two cents on this, Chris. I hope, uh, uh, I did, I, it was a, I, I think it was a, a plan by Overlook and, and, uh, Danny Burch because they were sick of losing, so they cheated to, to beat Fandango and, uh, Rezango become the NXT Tag Team Champion of the first time. Yeah, I didn't mention yeah. that. Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch are the new NXT champions, and they, that's the first time they either of them attain gold. They've been trying to become the Cruiserweight champion for the longest time individually. Now they got the gold of the NXT, and it was by the underhanded tactics and the help of Pat McAfee. What the? Get your two cents, Mikey. I, I, like I just said, could, could Pat McAfee... Could McAbee get his revenge on Adam Cole? We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, hopefully at Halloween Havoc, we may see Adam Cole if he makes it to Halloween Havoc. But Pat McAbee working with Oli Larkin and Danny Burch? What the hell is going on? How about you, Andre? How do you feel about Pat, Fe Pat McAfee and Oli Larkin and Danny Burch screwing over not just the Undisputed Era, but... Fandango and Bre uh, Tyler Breeze and becoming the new NXT Tag Team Champions. Ah, uh, man, that sucks. I want to see uh, Tyler Breeze and uh, Fandango win the titles, you know? This is something, too, because this might have had to be put in the play because, if I'm not mistaken, could Ro uh, Holland, what was that guy's name? Rich Holland. Yeah. Could he have been a part of this too? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, we have to watch NSC wins and see how this holds out. Yeah, maybe he was, in, maybe this was a ploy to believe that Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch were on their side against Holland and he could have been, this could have been a plan with four people, not just three. And he, he got accidentally injured, so. I don't know. Like I say, you have to wait. You have to wait till this coming Wednesday. I'm going to be mad if Holland actually is not injured. This was staged. He could be waiting in the Raptors to get jumped. I'm like some K, some K shit. Like, I don't know. I have no idea. 
Okay, anything else? No, let's just wrap it up. It's almost one. All right, a shout-out to our fellow brethren of the Heaven's Monsters podcast. A shout-out to Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, and Andre Mitchell. A link to their YouTube channels will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And a remaining shout-out to Chris Petrie, as well as T-Money, Renee, Farrell, and Delvin. A shout-out to Xavier. Please leave it a comment uh, down below, since I know you watch NXT, bro. Let us know what the hell you think is going on with NXT and Pat McAfee. Man, get your two cents, bro. So, with that said... Go ahead and get this ready. Because we ready to go to bed. Let me go ahead and flip that. There you go. Alright, you ready guys? Let's go. You like this video, give it a thumbs up. You didn't give it a thumbs down. Hit the subscribe button, like the content, and hit that notification bell for the next Heavens Monsters podcast. I'm Serge, that's Andre, that's Chris, and this is Mikey. Tell him what's up, Mikey. And that's the bottom line, because Heaven's Monsters Podcast, you said so, and we'll see you hopefully either Tuesday or Wednesday. Weekend. Or, or the weekend. Yeah. We're going to do two editions instead of one, because we got to cram it. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.